welcome back to the most amazing channel on the internet. I'm your host Rebecca Felgate and I love Christmas. It is not long now, I'm so excited. Traditionally Christmas is a great time of year for ghost stories. The winter solstice where the nights are at their darkest and the weather has turned. It's a classic time for spooks. Don't get me wrong, I love to jingle those bells and deck those halls, but I'm also really into classic Christmas spookies. Join me as we talk about the top 10 scary Christmas urban legends, but before we get into this video I do have a quick announcement. We are giving away $1000 on our Instagram. Consider us 3 cheeky festive elves. Whatever works for you, basically. If you want to be in with the chance of winning then please do head on over to Most Amazing Official on Instagram and check out our latest post for instructions. Also I do love a good festive chat, why don't you guys let me know what you are going to be up to this Christmas. I'm going back home to see my family in England, spend Christmas with them for the first time in 4 years so I'm very excited. Do let me know what you're up to in the comments section down below and also while you're down there why don't you spam some Christmas trees and Santa faces in the comments section and of course hit that thumbs up button and share this video with a friend. Alright Christmas urban legends, let's do this. Coming in at number 10 we have Krampus. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm actually scripting and filming this video on December the 5th and researchers just told me that December 5th is Krampus night. What? Now I'm pretty scared. Krampus is like the anti Santa. He's a half goat, half demon. Maybe he's a messenger from the devil himself, or maybe he is Lucifer incarnate. Who knows? All we do know is that legends of the Krampus are rife in Austria, Bavaria, northern Italy, and Slovenia at Christmas time, and that the monster is said to punish kids who misbehave. How does he punish them, I hear you ask? With a severe beating, that's how. Thanks, Krampus. With the worst kids, though, he's said to drown them or send them to hell. Fun. As I said, for me right now, tonight is Krampus night, which means that people in Northeast Europe will be out celebrating dressed like Krampuses. Krampi? Krampi? The problem with the Krampus parades and celebrations are that often people get way too carried away and actually beat people while they're in character. I think they need to slow down and stop channeling the Krampus. Krampus. Coming in at number 9, we have Black Peter or Zwart Pete. This has been in the news quite a bit recently because it is pretty below par these days. Black Peter is very scary to look at, but also because he is a racist stereotype. A lot of people have accused the people of the Netherlands and Belgium, where he's particularly celebrated, of perpetuating a racial stereotype. Blacking up just isn't cricket. Other than that though, Peter is a benevolent fellow who gives out candy to good boys and girls and is a great friend of Saint Nicholas. Doesn't sound so scary, right? A lot of people want to keep Black Peter alive and thriving, but others vehemently protest him. What do you guys think? Oh, coming in at number 8, we have Farmhand Rupert, and you don't want to party with him. Farmhand Rupert is a terrifying foe. He's a mean spirited trickster of a man. Sure, we're going to talk about the naughty list and the nice list, but Farmhand Rupert has a different way of dealing with insolent children. As part of German legend, Farmhand Rupert walks around the hood or the countryside and asks unsuspecting children if they can pray. If they can, he gives them a delicious gingerbread gift. If they can't, he gives them random pieces of junk. If they refuse, what does he do? He beats them with a bag of ashes. Thanks for the beating, farmhand Rupert, you gingerbread wielding creep. Coming in at number 7, we have the elf on the shelf. Okay, listen up. In my opinion, the elf on the shelf is absolutely terrifying. It's become very popular with parents these days, but the gangly looking elf has been in popularity since the book of the same name came out in 2005. The book is all about elves who visit kids' homes and watch them to determine whether or not they're naughty or nice. The book now comes with actually little creepy blue eyed elves, and you can have them in your home. The product description says that they are Santa's eyes and ears in your house. Hello, surveillance state of Santa. You're invading my privacy. A police state is actually no laughing matter, and the elf on the shelf is like a threat to kids. Do you seriously want them to grow up believing that they're being what? I don't know. I don't know. Are we normalizing this? I don't think we should. While we're talking about elf on the shelf, why don't we talk about the naughty list in general at number six? So urban legend has it that Santa Claus, Father Christmas, Père Noël, whatever you want to call him, the legend says that he has a naughty list and a nice list, which is pretty concerning, not least to mention that he sees you when you're sleeping and he allegedly knows when you're awake. 
Creepy. Those on the nice list are rewarded with gifts, and those on the naughty list receive lumps of coal. Coal is something that you throw in a fire, which basically seems like a thinly veiled threat from Santa to me. The whole thing is like a weird mind control game for kids. There are allegedly ways to check the naughty and nice list too. I went on the North Pole Times to check if I was nice, and I was, but then I started checking other names, and well, this happened. <clears throat> You sure about that, Santa? You sure? Coming in at number five, we have the Portuguese ghost dinner. In Portugal, people get up early on Christmas morning and have a feast for the dead called Consoda. It is to honor ancestors and dead relatives. Families will leave out extra plates of food as offerings for those who have passed. The offerings appease the dead and ensure good fortune for the household. If the feast isn't held for the ghosts and offerings are not made, well, it could be a bad year. Coming into number four, we have Anne Boleyn. Anne Boleyn had a bit of a hard life, didn't she? Historically speaking, sometimes by some people she's kind of frowned on for being a strumpet, but like in actuality, King Henry VIII was an abhorrent oaf, and she was, you know, just a woman who didn't want to give it up without being married. Saying that probably would have got me killed 500 years ago, but that's the thing about oppression, you can only silence people while you're alive. Your legacy speaks for itself when you're dead, so take that, King Henry VIII. You fatty. Anyway, poor Anne Boleyn, of course, ended up being locked in the Tower of London and then beheaded by her abhorrent husband. Life wasn't always so sad for her, though. She actually grew up pretty happy with her sister Mary in Hever Castle in England. It is said that every Christmas Eve, the ghost of Anne Boleyn can be spotted at this very castle in Kent, gliding around the grounds and across the bridge over the River Eden. Coming in at number three, we have the ghostly gathering. Poland's beautiful castle, the warm Warwell Royal Castle was built high upon Warwell Hill in the 1500s. Old Polish legend says that within the belly of the hill there is a cave where an ancient great dragon used to live, although the fearsome beast was defeated. The hill is shrouded in mystery and magic and is an important spot for the history of the Polish nation. It seems that the urban legend also has it that in the hill there is a grand chamber, and in that chamber, on every Christmas Eve evening, all of the former kings of Poland hold a special ghostly council. I don't know what happens to the queens, I guess they're not invited. Anyway, it's said that they produce a magical energy that protects Krakow. Coming in at number two, we have Frau Perchter. Merry Christmas! Hop, hop, hip, hurrah! Oh, look, it's the organ witch, Frau Perchter. Don't like her. She can stay away from me. This nightmare from Germany and Austria appears during the 12 days of Christmas right up until the Epiphany. She is said to be a direct descendant of the goddess of nature, and she generally lives in the woods all year round, outside of the 12 days of Christmas where she enacts judgement on the townsfolk. It is said that she loves to reward good people, but she has gruesome punishments for the sinful ones. She scoops out their internal organs and replaces them with garbage. Thanks, Frau Perchter. That'll learn them. She also isn't the greatest looker, not that I'm judging. I am, however, judging the organ scooping, though. That's just uncalled for. Finally, coming into number one, I enjoyed this legend the most, but it is pretty scary. We have the legend of, correct my pronunciation, Jolla Kotorin. Good. Thank you, Iceland. So yeah, beware Jolla Kotorin, the nasty killer cat. This ain't no household cutie kitty, absolutely not. The Icelandic Yule cat is part of a tradition of new clothes at Christmas. Good people, children and adults alike, are supposed to receive new clothes to wear for Christmas Eve. If a person receives new clothes, they're hard working. If they don't, they're said to be lazy. The Yule cat is the pet of a giantess, and it is said that she prowls the snowy countryside to set upon any one who hasn't received new clothes. The cat will then gobble down the unfortunate soul, leaving no trace. So guys, that was the top 10 scary Christmas urban legends. Now before I leave this video, I'm going to read some comments from one of my most recent videos, the top 10 scary dark origins behind nursery rhymes. Apo O said, hello darkness, my old friend, let's sing your creepy rhymes again. Hello darkness, my old friend, let's sing your creepy rhymes again, in another most amazing top 10. Thank you. Claymore said, please do another South African urban legends video. There were so many cool ones not mentioned in part one, such as the Telkoshi Hospital, the Kempton Park Hospital, Pilgrim's Rest, and many more. Maybe we should make a part two. 
Zoe commented, I love Zoe. She said, this is pretty creepy, but with Rebecca in the video, I feel like I'm safe. She's so nice. Zoe, thank you, but maybe that's what I want you all to think. Hannah Lee 88 Williams wrote, It's insane that such dark history can be made into cheery children's rhymes. I knew Ring a Ring of Roses was about the plague, but that isn't all. I can now imagine the people of London with their hammers and chisels trying to see if there really is kids buried in the walls. Love the channel, love the presenters, love from Sunny Stoke. Yay, Stoke! Hello, Stoke! Ooh, Stoke's near Alton Towers, which is one of my favourite theme parks, so there's my Stoke knowledge. Ooh, and good pubs too. Anyway, don't forget to let me know what you are doing for Christmas in the comments section down below. Don't forget to head on over to our Instagram to check out our giveaway. Like this video, share it with a friend, send me some festive joy. Love you lots, see you soon, bye.